suppose suppose summation a n x bar n has a positive radius of convergence radius of convergence r then we can define we can define define f from minus r to r to the real numbers which is the limit function which is the limit function what we have established in the last module is that f is differentiable f is differentiable on minus r r not only that f prime is given by the series summation n a n x bar n minus 1 n equals 1 to infinity we have this also so which means which means recall that the radius of convergence of this term by term derived power series is the same radius r as before which means f prime is also differentiable is also differentiable inductively 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 we see that f is a smooth function on minus rr so any function that is defined as the limit of a power series is going to be a smooth function now consider consider the taylor series i should put t with a capital taylor series t of f which is just if you recall summation nth derivative of f at 0 by n factorial into x bar n okay n equals 0 to infinity look at this taylor series this is also a power series this is also a power series is this series series related related to the original series original series summation a n x bar n that is a very natural and straightforward question well in fact the original series is nothing but this taylor series how do you see that well observe that observe that setting x equal to 0 in summation an x bar n we get we get f of 0 is equal to a not we are all familiar with this so at least the taylor coefficient of the first i mean the first term in the taylor series and this first term in the power series certainly coincide now what about the derivative what is f prime at 0 we, we know that the derivative is nothing but summation summation n a n x bar n minus 1 n running from 1 to infinity okay with our convention that 0 par 0 is equal to 1 this leaves us with this leaves us with a1 this leaves us with a1 so f prime of 0 is actually equal to a n a1 this is a good sign because the second coefficient of the taylor series the second term in the taylor series coincides with the second term in the power series summation a n x bar n well what about f double prime at 0 what about f double prime at 0 well that's just summation n equals 1 to infinity 1 to infinity n into n minus 1 into a n x bar n minus 2 so this is actually n equals 2 to infinity n equals 2 to infinity and of course we have to substitute we have to substitute 0 in the place of x 0 in the place of x and by our convention by our convention what we get is 2 a2 
is equal to f double prime at 0. Okay, you can see where this is going. We see that the nth derivative at the origin is nothing but n factorial a n. Okay, is n factorial a n. In other words, in other words, other words, a n is nothing but f n at 0 by n factorial or in other words, summation a n x power n is nothing but the Taylor series of f. Okay, so net upshot is summarized in the following theorem. Everything that we have done is summarized in the following theorem. Let summation a n x bar n have positive radius of convergence, radius of convergence r. Then, then so I will write f equal to with the understanding that f is the limit function then f from minus r r to the real numbers is a smooth function is a smooth function furthermore furthermore the Taylor series the Taylor series of f centered at 0 centered at 0 coincides coincides with summation a n x bar n excellent now let me just make one remark everything we have done everything we have done we have done holds true with appropriate appropriate change in notation with appropriate change in notation to series series of the form of the form summation a n x minus x naught power n x naught is a real number. So, whatever theory we have developed whatever theorems we have can also be proven with just a change in notation for series that are centered at a point different from 0 namely the point x0. We have concentrated for series at 0 because there is essentially nothing that is uh, lacking in our approach everything that we have said generalizes in an easy manner so wh why not just do it for the easier case and leave the notational changes to the student. Okay, Let me make one definition definition let f from a b to r b a function we say f is real analytic is real analytic if for each x naught for each x naught in a b we can find we can find we can find a power series power series summation a n x minus x naught power n whose whose radius of convergence of course, what I mean by radius of convergence here has to be appropriately changed to take into account that the center is no longer at 0, but that is a trivial change where whose radius of convergence r is greater than 0. We can find a power series summation a n x minus x naught power n whose radius of convergence r is greater than 0 and f restricted to minus r r intersect not minus rr I just said that notation has to be changed but I myself am stuck in the older notation it is um, x naught minus r x naught plus r intersect a b so you look at this point x naught look at x naught minus r x naught plus r that will be an open interval intersect that with a b this is in fact equal to summation a n x minus x naught per n that means in other words 
in other words in the common domain of definition of the series limit and the function f both agree okay so on the right hand side i'm just treating this as a function i'm just treating it as a function not as a formal series but as a function okay so real analytic functions are those that are locally expressible as a power series now it is very easy to see it is very easy to see that examples first polynomials polynomials are real analytic this is very very easy to see i leave it to you to check this now you might be thinking that there is another obvious example if summation an x bar n has radius of convergence r radius of convergence r greater than 0 then if f is the limit function if f is the limit function limit function then f from minus r r to the real numbers is real analytic now you might think this is the next obvious example this is definitely an example but whether it is obvious or not is not i mean is is uh, it's certainly not obvious to me it requires a proof and i am not able to find any simple proof every single proof requires some or the other machinery okay so let me just make a remark about the proof of this there are several ways to prove it i'll list three ways and not give any one of the ways because this is just a tangential point to our course so ways to prove this is the following first way is to algebraically manipulate algebraically manipulate manipulate the taylor series the taylor series of f centered centered at x not in minus r r and show that show that it's it converges to f converges to f or rather for show that it has show that it has non zero non zero radius of convergence convergence and it converges to converges to f now you might think what am i saying didn't we just prove that didn't we just prove that right here no we didn't we have shown this result with the power series centered at x not right we have given a function f whose power series is centered at x not and we have shown this result now when you take this new function f which is defined by a power series we now know that this power series is going to converge in minus r r if you take a point x not in minus r r there is absolutely no reason to expect the taylor series at that point centered at x not to converge at all let alone converge to f there is absolutely no reason to expect that the fact that it happens requires a lot of algebraic manipulation you can do this it's not very hard but it's still a bit tricky you can do this this is one way of doing it directly two two show under some general conditions under some general conditions general conditions when a function f is real analytic okay this is a more conceptual proof given a function f can you determine whether it's real analytic or not in some other way essentially what you will be doing in this second line of attack is to show that there is a necessary and sufficient condition on the behavior of the derivatives you can show that under an appropriate growth condition of the derivatives the function f will be real analytic again this proof is also a bit tricky third proof is the proof i like and the proof that i cannot possibly give one and two it is possible for me to give but since it's tangential to the course i am not third is impossible to give use complex analysis this is my favorite 
use complex analysis. And this is the most conceptual and according to me the correct proof. Only problem is you will have to develop at least a month's worth of complex analysis to have the tools to show um, exactly what we need. Okay, so I am going to leave this as a suspense thriller movie, leaving with no ending, no proof for this. But it's not really needed for this course. This it's good to know what a real analytic function is, and I'm not I'm not providing any example of a real analytic function apart from polynomials. Okay, so. This concludes this module. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on analytic functions and Taylor's theorem. Mm -hmm.